So now we're going to go back to Elliot and Sean for the, the reveal. <laughs> so last week I said we're going to have a special announcement. Um, Who doesn't know the announcement? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, today, this morning, we launched all of our 2013 trip data. Um, and we're making it available publicly at dutybikes.com slash data challenge. And we've turned it into a contest. And we want to, we know that a lot of you, a lot of people out there will just want to tinker with the data themselves. They would do it anyway. But we thought we'd make it fun, um, make a contest out of it, reward prizes for the most beautiful, uh, what are the categories again? The best overall, the most beautiful, most comprehensive, most insightful, most creative. Um, those are sort of the things that we're looking for. Um, and basically, all of the trip data, you'll download an Excel file. It'll include, as listed here, the start date and time, the end date and time, uh, the bike ID, which is that's not on there, start station, end station, what rider type they are. So we have members, people who pay for that $75 for membership, and also people who just get a 24 hour pass at the station. And if they are a member, we also include their year of birth and their gender. Although the year of birth, uh, in some cases, is off. I think there are reports that one person is 107 years old. Um, <laughs> it was, it was, it's self-reported year of birth. So. It's self-reported, yeah. So I think they typed in 1906. Maybe Did you see this? This was made already today at like noon or 2 o'clock. I did see that. Yeah. This is already there have been two, uh, two people ready to go, started already today. <laughs> uh, using the data. Um, and so this one shows the age. Yeah, the average age is 34. And then this one shows the gender distribution. Hello. Oh, yeah. So this is um, not totally surprising. You see that in other cities with bike share that is used heavily male. Uh, here's another gender. But that's and that's daily right <laughs> for members uh, of so, gender. So yeah, in terms of trips, the trips, at least in 2013, were 80% male and 20% female. The members themselves are actually 69% male and 31% female. Uh, but you know, this is the early days of bike share, and we hope to keep it this out. So basically, you come here, download the data. Um, basically, what we're looking for are infographics, animations, and interactive websites, whatever people are interested in exploring, uh, whatever questions that you have that you want to um, answer. Here are some examples from Hubway, which is our sister bike share in Boston. They did this last year. Here's one example of, I think this was a winner for the most extensive narrative. And you can see there's a lot going on there. But, uh, you know, we're looking at things like this, or even simple things. Maybe it's just one specific question you want to answer, and just one map that you uh, create. The way to think about these projects is the products could either be things that help people understand the system. That was a good example of that one. But things, I'm saying things, it could be an app, it could be a visualization, it could be a poem, whatever. Uh, things that help these guys run the system better, and we've already seen a few examples of that. So if any of you are good at predictions, I'm going you then that would be helpful. Or also things that help users use the system. Right? So those are three buckets you can kind of use to, to think about this. Or or things that are just really cool. Or things that are really cool. There was an animation of London uh, Park the Cycle Hire that yeah. I saw probably six months or a year ago. It's just really cool to, it, to watch all the trips and I mean you can literally it's mesmerizing. It's like a spirograph watching it kind of float. So <laughs> things like that that are just cool. That's that's also something we're interested in. So there's uh, 759,000 individual trips. They're all anonymized. Um, so there's a lot to play with. So it's everything from uh, June 28th to December 31st. Um, did you want to point out something about the, like, the Boston Latin School students? Or no, these were just these okay. nothing just in particular, examples, just yeah. examples of what people did um, in other systems, just to give sort of a sense of you know what you might do. So why is this data a big deal, and how is it different from from the other data? I'm glad you asked, because then I can give you a good explanation. So remember this, this this kind of heartbeat data. So for every station, we have a row in a spreadsheet, and each row each row is a station, and it tells you the number of bikes. 
and that, that whole spreadsheet updates every minute. That's what this stuff is. What this is is basically a spreadsheet where you're going to have the each row is a trip from A to B, and so uh, this column is going to be A station, this column is going to be B station, and it's going to tell you how long it took. So basically the same data as powering Divi Brags. Um, so think about this bike takes off, and now it's riding. It's my awesome bike. <laughs> it's a pretty good bike, right? Uh, it's writing, so when this happens a minute later, this all of a sudden goes down to zero. Uh, but here it starts to register the trip. So it's like, oh, it started A, and then eventually time passes and it gets to B. So this, is, this, is a, this is a trip right here, and then this is an independent station, which all of a sudden that next minute would now have one out of three. So the reason this is so powerful is that it lets us understand the kind of network properties of the system, whereas before we just all we saw is like blindly how many bikes were at each station at any given time. We didn't understand flow, and it's it's called the bike share network for for, nothing, for for a reason, right? So flow is really important. Um, so that's kind of how these things are, are different. <coughs> yeah. uh, I have a question about the. Hi, by the way. Um, uh, so you said the chips are anonymous, or the the riders are anonymous, but can you see, say, that like a 50 year old man started here at this station A and station B? Is that worth that way? Yeah. So. It's, it's just anonymous in the sense that uh, you, you can't tell who the person is. But if, if it's a member trip, say you took a trip, um, you know, would say a male who's X age took it from this station to that station. And it's all in one line. So each trip is a single trip. So this is you want to pull it up, actually? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So this one is small. Just so we can look at it. So then, uh, do you have the data in there as to when that person became a member? So you could look at, like, in the trajectory of their membership when they were most active? Yeah, so that's one piece that's missing is we, we don't include that. And actually, you can't track an individual member. Um, you can't be like, oh, member 2947 took this many trips. It's all just trips and who the person is, but not. As a unit, unique okay. identifier. You can't There's probably like a tech, or like how would you describe it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. identifier. Yeah. You might be able to assume if the same person, if the same age rider starts at the same station, yeah. at the same time every day and ends at the same station at the same time. Yeah, it's only that, that 106 year old age rider. I'm trying to reverse engineer this. Because the theory of giving us this much information is that it's okay to give us age and, and gender because we can't personally identify. Who's writing? But if you figure out a way to, to do it, you should tell them. So that could be a project in itself, which is figuring out how private is this data. To me, it seems pretty private, but that, that could be a project. In Boston, they did that, where they gave, I think, they gave like three years worth of data to MIT students and software computers and using this. Um, and in Minneapolis had that issue as well. They released a little too much data. Oh, really? Yeah. And in, in Boston, they weren't able to determine who it was. <laughs> Well, that's MIT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they know? Um, here's uh, one example of taking the trip data. So you select a this is in Washington, D.C. You select a station. So this one's near uh, Reagan National Airport. And, and it draws these lines. And the thickness of the line denotes the popularity of that specific trip. So between station at 18 needs, most Trips end up at 12th and Hayes or South Georgetown on the Drive. And I know we all know exactly where those are. <laughs> um, so now with this data that Divi has just released, you could build the same, or you could build something completely different. And so that's what the, the hat pad that it started is a lot of examples of people in New York. Well, actually, not New York, because New York has not released this data. But Washington, D.C., <laughs> Boston, and Minneapolis have created and then gave your, made this chart, and another person made this chart. So in three hours or whatever, people are already champing at the bit to, to see what they can make with this data. Yeah, I was actually, I was surprised by how much people are still mining in December. Mm. Yeah, like, really? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a lot. Also, like, the variability is really intense. And 
I think this variability is um, since these are all member trips, right? Yeah. So right. members typically take off take a lot of their trips during the weekdays when right. they're and then the weekends. Is. That's right. Exactly. But but like female is not as variable. Like, so what are we looking at here? Are these the number of trips per day? Well, per, per day. Per day. Mm -hmm. So this is a week right here, and then like kind of goes up and then goes down. Yeah. The other thing to consider is on the form that you submit your gender, male is listed first, female second. And it's also, I was trying to check in my own profile, male is, like, it's, it's shown first. So the chances are, like, I mean, it's possible it somebody just puts the first thing they see. Yeah. I mean, the, the, as someone who makes a lot of web forms will oftentimes <laughs> yeah. just check the first thing. <clears throat> so that's something that's that could be during the data yeah. in some way. It was uh, mentioned earlier that you said like 10 or 11 people or no more have been like scraping like minutes. Yes. Is that, is anybody like sharing it? I mean, is that so like yes, Ian Dees, who's not here, he has it. Um, and so we downloaded it, it's like 175 megabytes. Um, okay, so here it is. Oh, so now, well, so he, he it's just, it takes a while for him to put it together. Uh, and so the first one is 175 megs, and it unzips to two gigs. One text, or no, actually, it's like thousands of text files, one for every station for every day, I think. Um, so 300 times the number of days of last. Um, and then he just issued a new one today in anticipation of this uh, challenge. Um, by sharing data.hackpad.com. Yeah. And then it's called Chicago Data and Experiences. Um, you'll find, so I, I created this website like six months ago, and I put every single link that I can possibly find about bike share data around the world. Um, okay, so now we got questions and answers at that. Yeah, go cool. for